Welcome back. Today we're going to be adding and subtracting radicals. I am Mr. Sullivan. I know you've missed me. It's okay. I'm back. So every time I think about solving radicals, I think about the 80s, and I kind of was an 80s kid. I was, you know, in my uh, early teens when the 90s rolled around, so I kind of identify with the 90s, but the 80s were totally rad, and they always would say, oh, that was radical, man, totally rad. So uh, I'm going to show you some things from the 80s today that are totally rad. But before we get to that, we're going to do uh, some simplifying radicals review. Now, if you need more review on this, you can go to 11.1 in our Algebra 1 Common Core course. That will give you a more in-depth review if you'd like. Not a problem, all right? This is an 80s band called Flock of Seagulls, and I mean, this may be one of the most iconic, stupidest haircuts I've ever seen. Anyway, what does it mean to actually take a square root? The square root of 16 is 4. We know that. Why is the square root of 16 equal to 4? It's because it's a number that is multiplied by itself, is simplified by coming out of the radical. So anytime we have a pair of numbers, that number is going to come out of the square root, out of the radical. All right? So we're looking for these numbers that repeat. If I had a 3 and a 3 inside, I would take it out, and it would be a th one three on the outside. That's the definition of what a square root is. All right, let's take a look at example one here. Let's move our flock of seagulls out of the way. All right, now there's two ways, and I'm going to do it by the book first, and that's kind of the way they talk about in this algebra uh, one common core review eleven one. And if you like this way, go for it. All right, so I'm going to factor twenty. Just write it out as a list, so 20 is 2 times 10. I know that I, I don't have any repeated numbers yet, do I? No. Remember, if I have repeated numbers, I take it out. 10 is 2 times 5. I can't factor 2, it's prime. I can't factor 2, it's prime. I can't factor 5 because it's prime. Notice this, I have a pair of repeated numbers. When I have a pair of repeated numbers, where does it go? Outside. The non-repeated number stays inside. And that's awesome. It's a really good way to do it, all right? But I think I have a better way. And my better way, you need to know your perfect squares. Because if you remember, 1 times 1 is 1. 2 times 2 is 4. So I'm going to list my perfect squares. Now, whenever you get to these problems, I would write these perfect squares down, unless you know them by heart, which some of you do. It's not a problem. So 1, the, uh, the perfect square is 1, 2 is 4, 3 is 9, 4 is 16, 5 is 25, 6 times 6 is 36, 7 times 7 is 49, 8 times 8 is 64, 9 times 9 is 81, 10 times 10 is 100. I mean, you could go on forever, right? I generally go to 12. I don't know why. I just, it's habit, I guess. All right, so those are my first 12 perfect squares. All right, so here's what we're going to do. We're going to look for one of these numbers that goes into 20. I want the highest perfect square that goes into 20. So I'm going to start right here because 25 is too big. Does 16 go into 20? No. Does 9? No. Does 4? Yes. So I'm going to rewrite this as... 4 times 5 is 20, and I know the square root of 4 is 2. So it comes out. When I take a square root, it comes out. Can't take the square root of 5, so it stays. Now, this was a very small number. You always want to make sure and double check. As these get bigger, I find that you'll have issues with things like this, and then you'll run out of space, and you won't know how many twos when he changes four to a two. You won't. That's my issue with why this one is not maybe better. I like this one because I can go down the list. I can, if I don't know if it's divisible, I can put it right into my calculator as these numbers get bigger. But again, that's totally up to you. We want you to do what you like best. All right, so let's take a look. Oh, these are two icons that I grew up watching. This is, uh, I forget this girl's name, but she was on a show called Facts of Life. This is so typical 80s. Huge hair. I mean, look at that hair. So much of it. This is Tom Selleck. Great mustache. He was in a show called Magnum P.I., which actually is coming out as a new show now all of a sudden. I don't get it, but whatever. 
Notice I copy and pasted my perfect squares because I know I'm going to need them. I don't mind writing them down. If you're on a master check or a test and you want to write them down so you have an easy guy to look at, great. All right, I'm not going to provide those for you. I don't expect you to memorize those. It's easy to write down 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, and then it's easy to multiply it by itself twice. All right. All right. Number two, ooh, we have something on the outside. Is there a rule for something on that? Well, it just stays out there. So we need to work on the inside. 112. Here's my general rule of thumb. <clears throat> you could automatically start between the two numbers it is, 100 and 121. But pretty much the first number it could be repeated would be a 2, right? 2 times something. So I, I go about where it is half. So does 64 go into 112? No. Does 49 go into 112? No. Does 36 go in? No. Now again, I know these. If you don't know them, you can divide 112 divided by 36 and see if it comes out. Does 25 go in? No. Does 16? Yes, it does. 16 times 7 is 112. Therefore, we have a perfect square. I'm going to take it out. When I have a perfect square, it comes out. When I have a non-perfect square, it stays in. Now notice, I multiply what's on the outside. So I now have 20 radical 7, and I'm going to make sure we all understand. i got to double check that. Is there any perfect squares that I can go on a 7? Nope. That's as low as it goes. Let's try example number 3. All right. Ooh, now we have some letters. Interesting. All right. So the first thing I want to do is let's talk about the numbers. So we know how to do 45. 45 is in here. Let's see. 36 is not going to go in. 25 times 2 is 50. No. 16, no. But 9 times 5, 9 times 5 is 45. Now, 8 of the 5th, hmm, this is kind of where I like the other method. Anytime I have variables, 8 of the 5th means 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 A's, right? B to the 6, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. So let's see what we have that go on the outside. I have the square root of 9, which is 3. I have a pair of 2's, or excuse me, a pair of A's. I have another pair of A's, and I did, that's by itself. Remember the rule is square root, square root 2. Uh, B, I have a pair of B's, another, and a third. So I have three B's. Let's see what's left on the inside. Five, and we have an A. So all we have to do on the outside now is clean it up. A times A is A squared. In other words, I had two A pairs. B times B times B is B to the third. I had one, two, three B pairs. 5A. There we have it. Let's take a look at number four. We are off the charts. Here we go. So, right now, I have a three on the outside. The next thing I want to notice is, oh man, that is a cube root. What do you think the difference is a cube root? Cube root, I need how many like things inside to take them out? I need three. So the cube root of two times two times two is two. All right? So now if you want to expand a little bit your perfect squares, now what I generally do is I add a row. 1 times 1 times 1 is 1. 2 times 2 is 4 times 2 is 8. 3 times 3 is 9 times 3 is 27. 4 times 4 is 16 times 4 is 64. 5 times 5 is, 100, is 25, times 5 is 125. Now, I'm going to stop that chart right now because, look, 54 is already bigger than that. Let's see, does 27 go into 54? It sure does. So 27 times 2 is 54. X to the third, 1, 2, 3 X's, and Y. Here we go. The cube root of 27 is 3. So it comes out. I have one, two, three X's. So one, one group, one comes out. Do I have enough Y's? No, that's going to have to stay. So I took the 27 out. I took an X out. 
So now I have the cube root of 2y. Let's multiply. 3 times 3 is 9x. Cube root of 2y. Now you want to be careful when you write these. A lot of you get sloppy. This needs to be clearly with this. We don't want to see answers that look like this. What's the difference between this and this? This, to me, looks like it says 9x to the third 2y. All right, so you got to be careful about that. All right, so this would be our right answer. Okay, let's talk about combining like terms. We're going to compare it to what we already know and how it applies to radicals. You'll see, because remember, combining like terms is basically just adding and subtracting, right? So first with Michael Jackson, he was so rad in the 80s. All right, over here, 1 plus 5 plus 7, that's 6 plus 7, that's 13. Easy peasy. So let's check this out. Is that the same as 1 plus 5? Is the square root of 13 going to be the same? So if I put the square root of 13 in my calculator, because I don't know that one, it's not a perfect square, that's 3.6. All right, if I individually add the square root of 1, which is 1, plus the square root of 5, plus the square root of 7 in my calculators, I get 5.88. So my thing here is I want you to understand, these are not like terms, all right? You cannot add these together like you did over here. I would have to simplify them first, all right? So these don't add together. This is not equal to radical 13. It is simplified as 1, because the square root of 1 is 1, plus radical 5, plus radical 7. And that's as low as we can go. Let's extend that a little bit. David Bowie, all right? I know this is 1a plus 5a. That's 6a plus 7a is 13a, and that's awesome. All right? So now let's take a look. I have common radicals. These are like terms, so I'm going to add them up. 1 plus 5 is 6, plus 7 is 13. The term itself is a radical 5. It doesn't change. I don't do 5 plus 5 plus 5 is 15. It is just 13 radical 5. So far, so good. Let's ratchet it up a notch. All right? We got Miami Vice, Crockett and Tubbs. So cool. All right. So now we have a couple of different terms. I have 1a and 7a is 8a plus 5b. Likewise, this is a square root. This is a cube root. They are not the same. They look the same. They're not the same. I can only add things that are the same. So I can add 1 radical 8 plus 7 radical 8s. That's 8 radical 8s. And I can add 5 cube root 8s. Nope. So that's by itself. And we are done. Oh, we're not done. Here's where combining like terms with radicals is one more step hard. I have to simplify now. So I need a square root of 8. Well, I know that 4 is a perfect square, and 4 times 2 is 8. I know that the square root of 4 is 2, so it comes out 2 times 8, and the radical 2 stays in. So that's going to be 16 radical 2. I know the cube root of 8 is 2 because 2 times 2 is 4 times 2 is 8. So the cube root of 8 is 2. And when I have a perfect cube or a perfect square, there is no more radical. So now that's 5 times 2 is 10. So now we are left with 16 radical 2 plus 10. Could I add those together if I wanted? No, they're not like terms. This has a radical 2. That does not. All right, let's try two more examples here. So I have 4 cube root of 108x squared minus 192x squared. All right, let's see what we got here. So let's see. I know that 108 is 4 times 27, x times x for x squared. I know that 192 is 64 times 3, x squared, or x times x, rather. All right, so the square root of 4 is 2. It comes out. That's 2 times 4. Uh, I have a pair of x's, so 1 comes out. So now I have 27 left on the inside. The square root of 64 is 8, so it comes out. 
3 is going to stay in, and I have a pair of x's, so it goes out. All right, so now over here I have 3 on the inside. So we have 8x. 27. Well, 27 is 9 times 3. So here's the thing. Sometimes you skip over one, all right? For example, I'm betting that 36 goes into this. Well, let's see. 9 times 4 is 30. I bet you 36 goes into 108. But we missed a bigger number. It doesn't matter. You always have to check. So 9 times 3. So this is now 8. The square root of 9 is 3. Don't forget that x on the outside. This one was already simplified. So now I have 24x radical 3 minus 8x radical 3. Like terms, like terms. So 24 minus 8 is 16x radical 3. Remember, the like term, in this case, x radical 3, stays. All right, this is Alyssa Milano. She was a big hit in the 80s. She was on a show called Who's the Boss? All right. Another look. The colors, I mean, this is totally 80s. These things, this wristband thing, I don't know what they are. This is so 80s. All right, now we got cube roots. All right, so I got my cube roots down here. Let me move those over a little bit. Cube roots are, you know, quite a bit bigger, so you don't have to feel like, you know, you have to write as many. I mean, you can see they go up much faster. We only went to 5 and got to 125. So you have to look at where you are. I don't have to go past 54, so I know I didn't need 125. All right. 16. A is 8 times 2, so that's a so 8 is a cube root. Uh, 8 goes into 24 as well. Convenience. 8 times 3. 54. 30. Uh, let's see. 54. 20. Oh, 27 divided times 2 is 54. So minus 5 times the cube root of 27 times 2. So the cube root of 8 is 2. 3 times 2. And we have a 2 left over. The cube root of 8 is 2. So 2 times 4. And we have a 3 left over. And the cube root of 27 is 3. So 3 times 5. Cube root of 2 left over. So that gives us 6 cube root of 2 plus 8 cube root of 3 minus 15 cube root of 2. We have like terms here and here, so I can subtract those. 6 minus 15 is negative 9 cube root of 2. And this is not a like term, so plus 8 cube root of 3. There we have it. I want you to pause the video, do your best, and try these right now. Here we go, I did 320 was 64 times 5. 64 was, uh, the cube root of 64 was 4. The cube root of x times x times x is x. 5y squared stayed in, so I had 12x cube root of 5y squared. Over here I got 486 was 81 times 6. That gave me 9, square root of 81 was 9 times 5, radical 6. Over here, 294 was 49 times 6. The square root of 49 is 7. 7 times 3 was 21. Combined like terms, 66 radical 6. There you have it. Good luck on the mastery check, and don't forget to go out and be the change you want to see in the world.